So welcome back to everyone. Now we are here with the next session of our StreamCon. We are here with uh, Stefan Carlson, Sai Charan Madvaraj, and uh, Ravikant Malappa from Maersk. And they are going to talk about transition to Apache Kafka on Kubernetes with StreamZ. So hand over to you guys. Thank you, Paolo, and thank you for having us here. Um, what we want to tell today is our classic is a classic migration case study. So we will discover how our uh, uh, how how our past solution were, how it's now, and a bit dig into the future, how we want to be in the in the future. Um, at Maersk, we have had a transition from from Confluent platform and Confluent cloud to self managed Apache Kafka. Uh, with StreamZ on Kubernetes, and that's what we want to dig into. So yeah, as you said, uh, I'm Stefan Carlson. I'm a lead engineer in the streaming services department in in Maersk, where we both have uh, uh, MQs and and Kafka, and hopefully some more so, uh, in the future. We'll dig into that later. I'm joined by my colleague Sai, uh, who is the lead engineer in our Kafka team, and Ravikant, who is our lead platform architect uh, within the streaming services department. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, if you don't know uh, what Maersk is, I will quickly uh, tell a little bit about the company. Then we'll uh, then Ravi will dig into the past and a bit into the present, where Sai will discover the architecture and the features of our Streamsy platform. Then we'll go through tooling and a lot of extra uh, things we have added on top of Streamsy, and then last but not least, we'll talk about the future, uh, which plans we have for for our Streamsy setup. So, what is Maersk? Some of you might have seen the the blue star before. Uh, we are a global integrator logistics company. In the past, primarily focused on ocean, but now we are transitioning into our 2030 integrator strategy. So, we want to deliver uh, end to end, and when we look into that future, it's clear that we must take the next steps to, to deliver truly integrated logistics. These next steps could be connected physical assets like warehouses, Maersk is building uh, warehouses these these years, um, but also new and new digital and distributed platforms. This is where the event streaming comes into place. Um, yeah, so, so Maersk want to uh, upgrade that uh, data and technology cap capabilities to provide an even better end-to-end -end logistics for the for the company uh, for the companies that are that are using us uh, to move their cargo around globally and over to you Ravi for for our previous setup thanks Stefan uh, so with that background in mind uh, let's reflect on the past going back uh, around five years and uh, our need for event streaming capabilities. So why we wanted to have this uh, event streaming capability in Musk, right? So as Musk started its journey uh, to modernize uh, its applications for speed and reliability, we had to transform, transform uh, from a batch to event driven architecture. Uh, that is to process data in real time. So Confluent Cloud, which is a SaaS offering from Confluent and Confluent platform enabled us quickly to set up our environment or event streaming platform uh, without, need, without a need to manage uh, a, a complex infrastructure. So this allowed us the business platforms in Musk to focus on development, to use event streaming capabilities while we make the platform available to them, right? And using this kind of reliable and consistent data streaming solutions helped us gain the trust of our business stakeholders uh, by ensuring high availability and real-time insights into the events or the data. Also, uh, last but not least, the PA as you go model of Confluent allowed us to scale based on demand to some extent, optimizing the costs. Uh, can you move to the next slide, Stephen? So 
based on these needs, uh, what you are seeing uh, on the slide now is the past architecture that depict, depicts how we were able to set up our event streaming platform uh, initially using the Confluent offerings. So we have applications hosted in our data centers, which is our on-premise uh, environment, which needs to exchange these events with the consumers on cloud uh, and vice versa. So to achieve this, we have set up Confluent platform in our on-premises data centers using Docker containers running on VMware virtualization environment. And using the Confluent replicators, we are able to sync the data between these on-prem data centers into the cloud. So along with the native Kafka producers and consumers, which, is, which are producing and consuming to this Kafka system. We also have considerable amount of applications, those interact with our MQ infrastructure in streaming services. So to connect this MQ estate or to integrate this MQ estate with the applications hosted on cloud, we have implemented also Confluent connectors. So, Along with these, we have also used Datadog for real-time monitoring, and we adopted to GitOps-like approach using GitHub and Azure DevOps pipelines to set this environment up and then provision the resources to the uh, business platform teams as and when needed. So also we have uh, developed uh, in-house reconciler, custom reconciler, to maintain the cluster state uh, to the desired level. Uh, next, yeah. So now let's discuss when we had this, why we transitioned to use Streamzy for our Kafka ecosystem at Maersk. Firstly, we are part of a platform uh, in Maersk who works on building the technology backbone with a goal of offering a seamless developer experience. And that's our vision. So as part of our strategy, we work towards adopting to an open source technologies that allow us to benefit from the economy of scale. So not just Kafka or the, or the streaming services, as a uh, bigger unit in our uh, organization, we also have a unified approach to uh, using these open source technologies, like we have a centralized observability platform, which is also based on uh, open source technologies, and we have uh, Kong gateways and service mesh products, etc. Many of these, like you know, which falls into this, uh, you know, our our business platform basically, right? So this means we can leverage a va vast community, uh, reduce the cost and avoid vendor locks in when we use these uh, SaaS products instead. So secondly, uh, Streamzy helped us to build internal capabilities and supports inner sourcing. So this enables us to tailor our Kafka solutions specifically to Maersk needs and enhancing uh, so that we can enhance the flexibility and innovation at our organization. Moreover, we developed robust internal knowledge on managing and administering our Kafka ecosystem throughout these years where we had been working, as a specific engineering team had been working on especially managing this Kafka ecosystem. So this expertise ensures we maintain a control and can quickly address only the issues that arise any issues uh, those arise when we actually move to stringency based deployment uh, because we have this uh, in-house capability or knowledge with respect to the Kafka administration. So finally, with rapidly increasing adoption of our Kafka platform uh, during you know these years after we started uh, offering Kafka as a platform, we reached to we reached a point of no return and uh, stringency, came into uh, as a savior to support our scaling needs effectively 
ensuring we can keep up with the gro uh, growing demand so that we can host a self-managed Kafka system in-house and uh, we can make the cost effective uh, uh, solutions for our organization. And uh, can you move to the next slide, uh, Steph? Okay, so uh, I'll hand over here uh, to, uh, to my colleague Sai Charan to go over a little bit in deeper on how we were able to uh, how we were able to uh, set up this uh, self-managed Kafka cluster, which is called Retina, which uh, which means like reliable event transfer in action. Sai, over to you uh, to take us through. Yep, thank you so much, Ravi. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me here. Uh, this is Sai Charan. So till now, we have uh, discussed about what's the past and what's the future. So here is the diagram or here is the flow that illustrates how we are going to develop or how we developed a self-managed Kafka ecosystem in Mersk. So you see here, we have Strimzy clustered. So we figured out, okay, deploying the Kafka is easy, but the main question arises how to manage the system. So there involves a lot of upgrades, a lot of maintenance activities, since it's a central nervous system for a tenant. So any lifecycle management activity that is associated with the Kafka will have a huge impact on overall business across the organization. So we were that's where StreamZ helps us in maintaining this deployment process and management of the clusters, lifecycle management at ease for us. So that's where the huge thanks to StreamZ on this particular use case. Let's deep into the architecture here. See on the right side, you see there are the StreamZ cluster which is uh, running in the region. So what we have done basically is that we have deployed the Kafka on Kubernetes using the StreamZ operator. Along with uh, just not just deployment, we wanted to ensure we have a reliable, scalable, and highly secured system. So by default, StreamZ provided some of the features inbuilt with respect to the security. And with respect to the highly available system, what we have done is deployed the StreamZ based Kafka clusters in multiple regions and then have the data replicated between the clusters so one can act as a uh, disaster recovery or an active active solution. So here again for the replication of events between the clusters, we use StreamZ Mirror Maker 2, uh, which comes out of the box from the StreamZ. So we don't need to have an ha much hassle experience to deploy all those. Now, as Ravi was talking about rapid increase of adoption, and then uh, there is no point of return going back. The main thing that we need to look at as an organization is to align with the strategy and then provide the seamless developer experience to the business stakeholders who are going to use the Kafka platform. And along with that, as I mentioned, there will be a lot of changes, configuration things that goes in uh, while we are managing this particular Kafka process. So how do we deploy? How do we automate a lot of process? So how do we reduce the toil in doing the same repetitive work again and again. So that is where I would like to just quickly focus on the self-service part. See on the left-hand side, you can see the self-service. So here, what we have uh, done is that we used GitHub and along with the Golang APIs, which provides as a self-service layer for the business stakeholders to deploy the Kafka objects that are required for them at ease. So what uh, basically it performs is that it takes the input into the Git via the PR process. For example, the topic name, the partitions, whatever it is it takes. And then once the user checks or uh, raises a PR, we'll be performing a set of validations to make sure all these uh, inputs provided by the user in the proper stage and then can be accommodated with the Kafka clusters. And then our API takes this input validates and then converts this inputs of the tenant into a meaningful yaml definition and from that it will be pushed into the uh, git repository where we have integrated our flux uh, with customization into the kubernetes clusters so by doing so the turnaround time of deploying any kafka objects was pretty easy and then we do not need to spend a lot of hours in then uh, doing the 
repetitive process. So that's where the self-service actually helps us. And coming to the security part of it, uh, when we build a such large scale platform, we need to be really secured on how we are going to transfer the, e the user credentials, the certificates, everything to the respective business stakeholders. So that's where we use HashiCorp Vault as our secret management solution. So whenever the self-service kicks in, it creates the required credentials and the certificates for the users that are required to connect to the StreamZ clusters and then pushes to the vault where the users have a respective access to their secrets engine in the HashiCorp vault from there they can fetch it. So as a whole, as a platform engineer, without any intervention, that one tenant can easily onboard and then use the particular, uh, just focus on the development and then have the Kafka used at ease. So that's with respect to the self-service and coming to the monitoring and the connectors part. So right now, uh, as we mentioned at the MERSC, we are transitioning into the open source technologies where we have centralized observability platform. We have integrated the StreamZ clusters running into the uh, particular centralized uh, stack using Grafana and Prometheus. And we export all the metrics using the StreamZ Kafka exporters where we'll be able to analyze and view the metrics or build the alerting based on this particular rules. So, and along with that, uh, since Streams is an open source where we can have a lot of open source connectors that can be deployed. So along with normal, just native uh, publishers and consumers, we have the option to deploy the open source connectors which are available and or develop whatever we have to have a good seamless integration with the external systems like MQ, database, Postgres, et cetera. So quickly that covers my architecture. And by combining all this, we have a package with Retina and using this package, we are able to deploy seamlessly the combined as a, the, the Kafka as a platform in multiple Kubernetes clusters using different cluster topologies. So here, when I come to the features, we can see shared, dedicated hub and spoke. So since it's very easy for us to deploy something, uh, we have segregated into multiple categories, shared where it says, uh, we have segregated events type on the business where the events can be consumed across the multiple uh, platforms across the MERSC. And along with that dedicated events where independent Kafka clusters will be provisioned for the platform teams, where it be used for their internal events. And along with that hub and spoke model, where we aggregate the data between multiple clusters and then store it into one particular cluster for any kind of event streaming needs. So overall, uh, we have built a very robust system, which is highly available and reliable with 99.99 SLV to the tenants uh, by having a mirror maker with replicated the data across. Along with this, we have the schema registry uh, deployed as well for the data uh, quality as well. So we support Avro, JSON, and Protobuf. So with that, uh, I would like to hand over to Stephen to talk about the integrations and the toolings that we did on top of StreamZ uh, to make the user experience more enriched. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you, Sai. Thank you for your insights on the on the architecture. Before diving into the different tools that we have created to to make the DevX experience even better on top of StreamZ, we would like to to show some numbers. It's always funny to to look at some numbers on the on the on the activities in the in the clusters. This is actually an integration map from from Maersk showing all the different terminals that that Maersk is operating. So so why are we actually showing this this map? It's it's because we are we are slowly rolling out what we call Retina on Edge. Retina on Edge is uh, is as Sai says another flavor of our package that we can deploy in different terminals or on ships or on on anything where we would like to run a local Kafka cluster. And currently we have uh, Strimsy running in, in Barcelona, Gothenburg, Tangier, Mumbai, and I've probably missed a few things since uh, missed a few terminals since since they're rolling out every day. So so not we are not only running streams in cloud, but we're actually also running it in the terminals uh, to make an even better system for for the company. Uh, if we look at the numbers, we can see that we are having uh, right now we're having more than two hundred and ten tenants. A tenant is a team, so two hundred and more than two hundred and ten different teams. Uh, in Maersk using using our streams clusters, uh, in total combined with the um, with the Retina on Edge, 
clusters. We have 63 clusters currently running StreamC across our environments. And on, on those 63 clusters, we have more than three, uh, 300 brokers in, all, uh, in total. Uh, when we look at the topics, we currently have more than 13,000 topics, uh, including uh, almost 180,000 petition acro petitions across those topics. Um, um, most of these topics and most of the data are running on a shared cluster. Uh, as I also mentioned, the dedicated clusters doesn't have any, any restrictions on schemas. They are more loose in their topology of deployment. But on the shared cluster, we do enforce schemas. Uh, and currently, we have more than uh, 22,000 schemas. So we can at least see people are involved, evolving their schemas, even though it it causes some problems once in a while, and we'll cover that in just a few slides. When we look at it, the events on how much our platforms uh, and uh, are used, we can see that we are receiving more than 250 million messages per day across our clusters, most of them going through the shared cluster. Uh, when we look at the at a more real-time scale, we can see that we, in average, uh, receives 65 megabytes per second and can, and sends 90 me megabytes per second. So that's some of the few numbers. Do uh, as this is a migration case study. Do note that this is only numbers from our new platform, and we're still in the progress of migrating the last ones from from our old platform. So these numbers are rapidly growing. These are from just a few weeks ago. So it might be even higher now. Okay, let's uh, let's talk a bit about how we have enhanced the DevX experience of on top of Streamsy. So one one use case when I joined Maersk and joined the streaming services capability, uh, one one thing I often heard was from uh, one of the complaints I often heard from the from the Confluent solution were were this Confluent control center also called C3. Uh, tenants were were not happy that they could not browse their messages. They would really like to see their messages in real time while they were debugging and developing their new topics. I mean, this is a feature available in C3, although you need to give full admin access to the whole C3. And since we have more than 210 teams using our platform, we don't want to give all of them admin access. That was too big of a security risk, cyber security thought. So we needed to do something ourselves. And what we have implemented is this Retina Manager, it's called. It's a read-only platform uh, for tenants, uh, for all tenants to access and view the topics, uh, the messages on the topics, the brokers, the clusters, configurations, anything you can think of, even connectors as well. It's built purely on open source. You can see the link in the top right corner uh, to the open source project that we have forked and, and contributed to and developed on top of it. Uh, internal features. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right repo anymore since they have been forking out to uh, to a new one. If I recall correctly, the new one is called Kafbat, but they have a they have a uh, they have a documentation in the in the old repo where they link to the to the new one. Uh, in average, we have more than 300 users per day accessing this Retina Manager, uh, primarily engineers and more than 7,500 requests querying the Retina Manager. One of, one of the most wanted features is, of course, the message browsing. That was why we even built this platform. And in general, all messages are obfuscated uh, on the platform. So only the ones your ACLs allows you to view and uh, consume or publish to, those messages will be demasked for you. So there is a security by design in the whole implementation of the Retina Manager. Going back to the schema problems, uh, we do see a lot of uh, confusion about schema involvement. What's what's available, what's not available. Uh, how can we make this process even better? So recently, just two weeks ago, Maersk has open sourced uh, this schema compatibility UI component that we have built internally. The link is in the top right corner. It's a standalone open source Apache 2.0 license tool. It's made for, for our tenants, our consumers to fail fast and be able to, to, um, to quickly respond on, uh, quickly is 
respond and evolve on schema changes rather than waiting for the pipelines to fail because we also do validate schemas in our pipelines. But what if they? it could be an integrated part of their development experience instead? So we have launched this project where you on the left-hand side can paste in your current schema and on the right-hand side you can paste in your new schema and based on your compatibility level, we support all of the normal ones, backwards, forwards, full and none. And based on your schema type, we support currently in the project, arrow, JSON and protobuf. It will give you a meaningful error message when you press the validate or it will say, or it will say validation successful. Here we can see that we're checking for backwards compatibility, but we have added H2 on the right hand side, which is not in the previous schema. So this is obviously not a not a compatible change to the schema. Sai quickly mentioned, and Ravi as well, our, our observability platform we have in Maersk. Uh, this is what we use on our daily basis to keep our SLA and SLO as high as it is right now. Uh, we have a fully uh, internal and open source based observability platform based on, on the Grafana stack. We have Prometheus, Grafana, uh, front-end observability, Loki, Mimia, and Timo for, for all the different things like metrics, traces, locks. And we have built quite a lot of dashboards and we have also reused some of the Streamsy dashboards uh, in our daily ops call. So, so the, the dashboard you see on the, on the, in the back is, is our daily dashboard we use in our, in our ops calls to check the health of all our clusters to see if there is something wrong in there. On top of that, uh, not only observability, we have also built a full alerting system on top, utilizing the, the linear regression uh, in, in Grafana to predict whether new alerts comes. Everything is alert by code, so it's synced back and forth between Prometheus and our GitHub repositories using GitHub Actions. Uh, and it, and uh, in Maersk, we have... Uh, an internal build system called Hedwig on top that will that will call you or message you uh, if a, if an alert of a certain criticality is being fired um, while you are in the on call shift. So so yeah, uh, our whole infrastructure is not only uh, based on Streamsy, but we also have a lot of other things at, added on top of, uh, in in terms of the in terms of the enterprise and the reliability uh, we need to provide in uh, in Maersk. Last part, uh, yeah, it's basically just a, a thank you to the to the Streamsy uh, community. Um, we in Maersk thinks it's a, it's a good idea to to contribute back to 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 the projects that you are that you are heavily involved in and heavily rely on in your in your infrastructure. So lately, uh, the Retina team in Maersk has been contributing to Streamsy, and in the current version 0.4.1, we have five pull requests that are going through uh, that are released as part of this release. One of them is the is what Paolo also mentioned during the during the keynote is this new dashboard for uh, for metric observability. So basically, we have built a dashboard and exported metrics on certificate expiration, uh, both for for clients and for clusters. So you can set up alerts and 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 basically in the new stream C zero four one. If you pull this one, you will also get this dashboard for for your organization that will list all of the certificates in your stream C clusters and show expiration. And then you can build with your favorite alert tool. You'll be able to build um, uh, build alerts on top of that. We have alerts to know when we need to. We need to um, uh, refresh our our certificates. That's one of the things. There is also a few other improvements for the Grafana dashboards, and yeah. So, what does the future look like? Well, the future is of course still based on Streamsy. Um, if you recall the the architecture from from our old solution, it's all right. If you didn't, there were this whole section. Uh, of on-prem, and we have not discussed that yet in our new Streamsy-based solution. So this is a, this is of course something that we are we are looking into because we want to do a full 
uh, full decom of the old system, but that requires us su to support the on-prem applications that are running in uh, in legacy software like mainframes and stuff like that. So I will hand it over to Ravi for for a quick walkthrough of our future on-prem solution of Retina. Sure, thanks, uh, Stefan. Again, uh, so currently, like you know, whatever we have discussed until now uh, is specific to the cloud environment that we have in Musk, right? And because we have this uh, also, you know, good amount of uh, Kafka existing in our on-premises DC on VMware. So right now, what we are doing is that we are migrate we are connecting into the cloud retina i mean the cloud uh, streams based solution using the mirror maker 2 here along with uh like you know we have also uh in our cloud solution the schema registry which is a community licensed version of uh of confluent so because we don't have in mirror maker any schema translation available we use open source a uh, single message transformer uh, uh, code to do this schema translation by customizing it to our needs. So this is used currently also in our migration uh, to uh, the Strimzy based Retina uh, Kafka ecosystem, as well as uh, migrate, as well as replicating the data from our data centers into cloud. So going forward, as we are also uh, modernizing our DC infrastructure to be a cloud-like infrastructure, uh, having Kubernetes in there, we are going to deploy our uh, solution, the Retina solution, which is based on Streamzy, into on-premise and then migrate the existing VMs infrastructure into these Kubernetes using, again, Mirror Maker 2 uh, as our tool for migration. And uh, this is work uh, started but going to come in future soon where we use again streamsy based solution to run in our on-premise uh, uh, cloud infrastructure and then use the same uh, components to integrate with for uh, you know security management which is the hashicot vault and then the centralized observability platform etc so while we are replicating that into uh into into the cloud in uh, the azure cloud retina we will be using a uh, gtm to uh actually uh send the messages or the events to a particular cluster and then fail it over onto uh the other cluster uh, as a disaster recovery solution so that that's something which is going to come uh, soon uh, in our future uh, on the on-premise side. Thanks, Stefan. Again, you can move on to the next slide. Thank you, Ravi, on those insights. And our last slide, uh, which is as another future component, we are currently kickstarting that right now, is, of course, stream, process stream processing. This is the new hot topic uh, in, in event streaming, and, and we also see a lot of need for, for stream processing across Maersk. Uh, we have a lot of things running in Spark already, uh, and we wanna we wanna bring the stream processing fee capability closer to to Kafka. Uh, so what we're looking into is like on uh, Streamzy on Retina is an automated self service for for stream processing. Uh, so basically co-running uh, and an Apache Flink cluster next to the to the Streamzy cluster. Uh, it will be an uh, API first architecture like for um, like for for streamsy clusters based on on golang and and also uh, github actions for for the self service uh, we will initially uh, discover some some predefined templated jobs so we'll do the jobs that will be templated away in self service to make sure that all of the jobs are running on the sa in the same style uh, for 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 better utilization of the clusters. Later, we will also open up for for uh, custom defined jobs. Uh, but this is the latest thing that we are working on to to extend our our Streamsy uh, journey in uh, in Maersk. And that was it for from our side. 
any questions from uh, from the audience, Paolo? I see there are a lot of questions. Uh, maybe do we have some time to answer them? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for your session. It was great. It was great to see how Maersk is using Stream Easy today. We have five minutes, uh, a lot of questions. So I will go through a few of them and then you can stick around in order to answer sure. the rest. Or, uh, um, yeah, if the next session we start, we can just move on a, on the Stream Easy Slack channel. I will create a dedicated thread for you. So the first question is, <clears throat> Did you consider other operators before setting on StreamZ? Well, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, go on, Ravi. Yeah, so yes, uh, maybe probably two years back when we actually started this journey, we uh, also verified or you know, validated uh, other operators. I'm afraid if I can take the names of them. But what <laughs> made us to move StreamZ <laughs> is basically for a couple of reasons either those were licensed operators or which are open source were not uh, as feature feature rich as uh, streamz is so when we actually ran streamz we couldn't really find any difference of how we are actually using our existing infrastructure uh, with respect to the seamless developer experience first point the second thing is that the community support that uh, streamz has uh, I don't see like, you know, for other operators uh, which are in the market, at least which we have uh, gone through and then validated. Uh, even today, I mean, we have, uh, we go through a lot of, uh, you know, issues or problems when we uh, try to improvise our self-service uh, using StreamZ and the answers we get on community are very fast and also uh, accurate. So that's another reason. Uh, so apart from the, if you want to go to, you know, licensing products, of course, they might be more mature, but that's what we wanted to avoid. And uh, also there are, there was uh, one another operator also, which we have uh, validated, which was not as Kubernetes friendly as it was for DCs. So these are the reasons why, like, you know, we have chosen Streamzy and uh, we are happy for the decision uh, even after two years. Thank you. That's great to hear. Yeah. So um, the next question, maybe it was I can already on the next question, Ravi. Did you develop your own format for defining resources in the self service and then transform that into streams resource format or are you using streams format in your self service directly? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I can take that up quickly. Uh, Sai, if you want to add, uh, you can. Sure. Um, so our self service is not so streams is part of our self service so we are actually we have actually developed a package which is a combination of github and apis that are written in golang so we give very simple format uh, today uh, as an input request to the user like the user will request us in very simple format you know kind of this is your region where we want this resource and then our golang apis actually read that and then converts it into the streamsy understandable format which is nothing but the crds after which our you know orchestration pipeline gets triggered and then uh, the whole setup uh, comes to them and a, uh, a few a future uh, aspect of this is that in few, we are actually working on making this available through a ui so that the user need not have to go and request in github uh, send a request for a request a file in GitHub with whatever the details that uh, resource that he needs, but he can actually go to a UI and then uh, in fact, you know, request for what the resource he needs and then automatically it will be provisioned for him. Yep. Oh, let's go with last question. Thank you. Just one minute. Um, Pelo, you're back. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Paul. Yeah, just la last one question, and then we have to wrap up. Um, I will go with uh, uh, this one. Do you think your Streamzy setup saves you money compared to the Confluence stack before? I think, I think, I mean, it's for, at least from our perspective, it's not only a money perspective because you cannot put money on, on resources and internal knowledge. First of all, we have had quite a few 
incidents on on Confluent where 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 we where we were where we were struggling getting getting things to work. Uh, I mean, we have also met quite a lot of good support. So by having the by having the knowledge internally in the company, we can quickly react if something happens. Secondly, as Sai also mentioned, we have a vast, much bigger uh, deployment topology of our clusters, so we can support a lot of different use cases in the in the old in the old system uh, in the old system based on Confluent. We only had two clusters in production, whereas now we are having 35 clusters in production, having and also having the ability to run Retina on Edge. So, I mean, from a it, to me, this is not only a comparison of cost, but it's also a comparison on flexibility and the ability to react yourself fast if and when something is happening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So uh, we are running out of time. I right. will say- I think there was another question. Do we have schema registration Kafka? Yes, I, we do. I don't think we have any more time for questions. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. All right. Yeah, so uh, no, let's but wrap we try up. to answer them in the chat, Stephen. Later. Yes, yes, okay. let's wrap up here and uh, you can uh, stick around and answer into the chat. So, sure. thank you very much for your great session, folks. And uh, yeah, I hope that you will continue to attend the rest of the sessions today, right? We will, we'll be around. Yeah, thank you. So, Thanks. for the attendees. Thanks, See you later in uh, in ten minutes. You are going to have a coffee break, and uh, with the next session would be at uh, four forty European time. See you then. Thank you. Thank you.